Okay, now we're really starting to play around with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, one of the things that could get annoying if you're an iPad user, for example, is having to type in this script every single time uh, you want to use your iPad. Um, it's annoying because you have to SSH in before you can even get started. Well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to show you now how to remote, uh, well, so how to do startup scripts, basically. So you could do a lot of this by connecting into the Raspberry Pi, as we've shown many times now. There we go. Um, but there's, uh, you know, a slight problem uh, with doing it this way. Uh, and I, I just, it's a personal preference for me. Um, if you're using the terminal uh, application and you've got a lot of things as I do already written down like I do here, um, copying and pasting between uh, remote desktops isn't the most straightforward of things. Um, so I actually prefer not to bother using um, the remote desktop connection tool here. This is when I would step in and use terminal. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to SSH in on my Pi, as we've done uh, several times. Stick in the password, default. So that was just SSH uh, Pi at, and then whatever your IP address is. Um, so I'm in, really. And I've got a few things that I was uh, looking to do. But just to show you, uh, rather than recalling one of my old uh, lines, this is the line you'll want to do that I found. I know there's different ways to do this, but I found that this runs at, all, at start and you can stick in a few lines extra to help you along. So you may need to create this file, but it should, it should be there. Um, you can navigate to it on the GUI or you can just copy and type in that po code, which is why I like to use um, command line interface here because I can just copy and paste that rather than have to type it out and do spelling mistakes. Um, and then press enter and I'm in. There we go. And that's what you'll be um, presented with. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this line that we've already talked about. Don't forget the uh, at symbol. And um, I'm just going to stick it in with uh, paste. There we go, because it's an annoying little line to write with all the, all the words in there. Um, so just copy and paste. Uh, and that's it. That now will run the, Z the VNC server at the right pixel ratio um, for us to use on the iPad every single time without having to write that in. You can add other things in here. You can use the at symbol to start programs up, to, to do other little tweaks that you do. Uh, I use it on other builds to disable the screensaver um, for kiosk mode on, on Chromium, for example. Uh, lots of things you can do, but I find this is the best place uh, to place those lines of, of code um, to run these startup scripts. Uh, what I'm going to do is press Command X to uh, to save it, then press uh, yes, sorry, it was Control X, uh, then press yes, and then press enter. Uh, and that's it. And just to make sure that uh, it's there, there we go. And I can uh, Control X out again. Now what I quite like to do is type in exit first and close the session before I restart uh, the Pi. Um, it's because at the moment I'm on my on my um, iPad here and if I go to do uh, ISSH which is the app I use and I go to go in at the moment because I've not actually run that script yet um, what I'm going to do here is just go in and it should have real problems um, because we've not actually run that script on terminal yet. There we go, connection failed. So I'm going to restart the Raspberry Pi. We're going to do exactly the same thing on my iPad and show you that that startup script is running well. So uh, I'll just unplug and replug my Pi and uh, we'll have a go at that in a moment. See you in a second. Okay, so what I've, what I've got here is I'm just going to go back in. It's the Pi's restarted. I'm going to go into the same application I had used before. Um, and this only works when you type the correct uh, line of code in that we've already discussed. So if I click on the Pi now, it should go straight in and uh, go into the GUI. And there we go. Uh, one thing I will say is this error code comes up um, due to that script we just wrote. wrote. Um, it's not a problem and I've been online and there are fixes for it but you know what pressing the OK fixes it more than enough 
and it doesn't bother me. Um, so don't worry about that code. If you're the type that does, then you can do some research and fill that in. Um, but there we go. So now we've run, uh, using this example here, we've, we've run an, uh, a script at startup um, and added things to it. And you can add lots and lots of things. I have found, though, that opening up applications uh, doesn't work as well with the remote uh, GUI as the physical. So um, I'll run these startup scripts, and when plugged into a TV and everything like that, and running off the actual Pi itself, everything works. But the remote session is slightly different, so you may have to put things in a in a different folder if you if you want that. But usually, when I'm generally writing these scripts, it's because it's something I, I want to happen on a TV screen. So this is why I put it there. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, and now, really, you should be able to play around with that. I've shown you how to install files uh, or, or programs, applications. I've shown you how to connect to the iPad and to a computer uh, as well as the box standard TV in the first video um, you know and I'll keep adding to these little projects but really that is the fundamentals on how to get started in many different formats on your Pi so I've hoped you like those videos uh, and I'll end the sessions for now see you soon